what's the most haunting thing someone said on their deathbed? I work in a nursing home, and one stick out for me was my kids left me here to die. May that not happen to you son. Former CNA in the dementia unit of an assisted living facility. My dad is on his way to pick me up now. She said that every time I checked on her, until she died about a week, after it started, while she was still mobile she would tidy her room and sit on the edge of her bed and just wait most of the day. My grandmother grasped the nurse's hand, and said I think I'm going to die now. The nurse was telling her no she was doing much better, and would likely leave soon, but my grandmother was gone, before she could finish her sentence, she knew. I'm scared, elderly gentleman worsening congestive heart failure, incapacitated and his wife put him on hospice. He was comfort measures only. I was at the nurse's station and I could hear him starting to gasp for air. I walked into the room, and he was struggling to breathe. I put my stethoscope up to his back, but I already knew what was happening. His lungs were full of fluid. I sat him up in bed and he stared at me, eyes wide open, head tilted slightly back. Facial expression was full blown panic. I'm scared. Immediately after he said the words his oxygen mask started filling up with pink slash red frothy foam, running down his face, and dripping onto his gown. He was dead within minutes, and all I could do, was watch him. I will never forget his face. I didn't mean to- We were sending this middle aged guy home after his ear visit, as soon as we moved him off the bed. He went unresponsive, and had no heartbeat. We did a couple rounds of CPR, and he began to come to- he blinked a couple times and the doctor running the code jokingly said sir, you almost died on us. The man said I'm sorry, I didn't mean to in a sad way. His heart then stopped again, and we couldn't get him back. Since a lot of you are asking, it was most likely a saddle pulmonary embolism. He was there for something pretty mild, but he threw a clot, right when he was being transferred. If you want to look it up, he had classic Cape cyanosis across his chest, which is indicative of a big pet. I started my nursing career on a palliative unit. In my first 3 months as a RN, I pronounced 7 deaths. This one patient had advanced dementia and often believed he was at work. While he was awake in the hospital, he would often give us, the nurses and care aides, tasks and jobs to do, as he believed himself to be our superior. One day near the end of December he asks me when is New Year's. What day is it this year? I tell him New Year's will be the upcoming Tuesday. He nods and tells me that he thinks he's going to have to quit after the new year. This job is getting too difficult for him and he can't keep up. It's time to retire. I tell him we appreciate all the hard work he's done and we'll miss him terribly when he's gone. That he was a great employee and we all loved working with him. That Tuesday, January 1st, he passed away peacefully in his sleep at 0200. I will never forget that conversation. I'm a nursing student in Canada, and on my palliative rotation I had a patient that was getting medically assisted dying the next day. He was an elderly cancer patient. He told me he was a self-ordained minister, nothing official but an at-home type preacher, and that I could confess to him anything I wanted. I humored him and whispered to him some of my biggest secrets. I figured who cares he was going to die tomorrow anyway. He told me it was alright, and I could tell he appreciated that I confided in him. He also told me his ML address, and said that, while he would not be sending MLs in return, he would be receiving them. He was a cool guy. Many moons ago, when I was a nursing student, a man in his 40s was lying on his death from terminal cancer, his sobbing wife lying in bed next to him. He looked at his wife, using the last bit of energy he had to gently wipe away her tears and stroke her cheek. He took off his oxygen mask, and said don't worry love, don't be afraid, it's just death, and passed shortly after. From when I worked in private practice, had a patient get diagnosed with a moderately aggressive but treatable throat cancer, we tried everything we could think of to get him to consider treatment. He refused any type of treatment, so after about 3 months, his wife had their two adult sons basically carry him into the office at 4.50pm on a Friday afternoon, I was the only nurse in the building, I got him into an exam room, dude was completely grey, gaunt, and you could hear how close the end was every time he breathed, it wasn't exactly a death rattle, but you just knew his lungs were full of fluid, his sons sit him in a chair, and he starts to slide out. The room was too small to put him on the floor and the exam table was too high to lift him up on it. 
I stood between his legs and held him upright in the chair while I told the sons to go get the doctor. Told the wife to call 9 double one. We all knew nothing was going to keep the man alive much longer. He patted the side of my leg it was the most he could move and whispered. I should have listened to you all. I don't want to die. He lost consciousness and all I could do was just keep him from sliding out of the chair until the EMTs got there. After the ambulance got him to the hospital, he lasted about 4 hours. I had to tell my grandmother that dialysis would only give her another week or so to live. And it was her choice to try or not. She was in and out of consciousness at that point and was in a clear state for the moment. She asked, will I die? I said, yes. She looked me in the eye and smiled just a little and said, sometimes you gotta do what you don't want to do. She closed her eyes, squeezed my hand and slept until she passed a day later. When things get hard, I always hear her say, sometimes you gotta do what you don't want to do. Short story, but we had a young patient years ago. She had a history of illegal substance use, had gotten sober a few months ago, but had developed endocarditis, infection of her heart, and had vegetation on her valves as well as severe heart failure from dirty needles. She needed months of antibiotics, and then would be eligible to get a VAD, ventricular assist device, machine to bypass her heart and possibly bridge her to a transplant. After being sober long enough, she had already been on the unit over a month. She was quiet, sweet, and reserved but always thankful for her care. She had no social support. Her mother was who gave her substances the first time. And she had no contact with anyone in her life except for one friend who came in once a week to check on her. On her 24th birthday we got her a cupcake and sang her happy birthday. We hung a banner in her room, got her little presents, some games to play in the hospital and adult coloring books. She said thank you but didn't show a lot of emotion. She was always quiet, and we were not entirely sure how she felt at the time. That day, on her birthday, she went into cardiac arrest and died. We spent 45 minutes trying to get her back. Her friend came in to collect her things, and showed us the message she sent her that day. It had a picture of the cupcake, presents, and banner and said I love my nurses. I don't know how to tell them, but they are the best family I've ever had. She did tell us in the end, I'll never forget her. I cried on and off the entire rest of my night shift. My stepfather passed away last year. Towards the end he was very cranky and hadn't treated my mother very kindly. Before he lost consciousness he was stroking her face saying back quote beautiful. Beautiful that made me happy. Looked after a guy with end stage heart failure. He kept having episodes where, if he coughed or leaned forward anything to increase his intrathoracic pressure, he would pass out. He would come back after a few minutes and gradually go from purple back to pink. How long was I out for that time? He was fully mentally fine sharp, witty and at peace with what was going to eventually happen to him. Him and me were joking that one of these episodes were going to kill him. As he sipped his tea and we talked rubbish, five minutes later it happened again, and he didn't come back. He had a DNR order which was sensible, very eerie to talk to somebody, so vibrant and alert minutes before he died. Such a nice dude, I want to be in that mindset when I go to. I'm a hospice chaplain. Many times people begin to talk to dead family members or pets and describe them there or see heaven opening up or things like it. I've had a good many predict their death. One patient with Al's requested to see me, and our conversation was about how she's ready, and wanted me to help her prepare. Though she seemed months from death she passed that weekend. One story, though, takes the cake. I was working in a hospital at the time. There was a spiritual, non-religious man I had a good connection with. He requested me to his room, so I came over. He motioned me to crouch by his bed and spoke in a whisper do you see my brother in the corner? I told him I don't, but I believe he is seeing him. He was completely lucid and calm as he explained he has been in the corner, and he has been talking with him, hashing things out, and coming to forgiveness, like they weren't able to do before the brother died. He worried the nurses would think he's crazy, and try to medicate him, when I assured him I believed him, and just wanted to listen to what he had to say. He went on, I see death. 2. She was in the parking lot. I could see her from my window. She had my brother with her. Now she's in the room. She's all black but chained ugly. He was totally at peace. Died a few days later, when a tumor invaded an artery. 
This was during my final year as a medical student. I was working an internship. It was late, and we were doing our last rounds for the night, right before the shift change. There was an elderly gentleman. Came from at home hospice, stage 4 cancer. Covered had limited family visits to short, short increments. Family often had to wait in the lobbies, or go back home until another visiting time slot was opened. He held on for a few days, when we were alone. We had spoken during moments of his lucidity. He had expressed his guilt over the pain his dying was causing to his loved ones. He looked at me with a weak, but genuine smile every time I asked if he was okay. He never once complained of pain. He even outright denied pain medication when offered. His reasoning was that someone else would need it, and not him. We all knew he was hurting. But, on that last night, he said to me, I want this to be my final lesson to my family. I want to show them how to die with dignity. A few moments later, he asked me if I could say to him it was okay to die, to find peace and rest. He said he couldn't bear the thought of his family seeing him die. He wanted to hold on because he was his family's whole support system. But he finally said his pain was too much, he was ready to pass. I told him that he didn't need to keep fighting for his family's comfort. If he was truly in pain and ready to go, it would be okay to die. His family would understand. Once I gave him the okay, he started the process, delirium, heavy breathing, and fidgeting, and the death rattle, and then he was gone. He was much a great man, a kind, and gentle soul. I never knew for long, but I genuinely miss the man. Rest in peace, sir. This isn't something my grandma said to me, but something I said to her, while she was in hospice, just a few hours, before she passed. She had reached a point, where she couldn't speak anymore. But she could gesture a little bit. I was alone with her in her room and my aunt and uncles, all of her kids except my dad, were chatting in the hall. I could tell she wanted something, that it was important. I just had a feeling she wanted her kids, that this was the last chance kind of thing. I poked my head into the hall, and told them grandma wanted them, and they should all come. I got brushed off, and they wouldn't come the few feet into her room, or stop chatting for a few minutes. I went back in and told her that everything was okay, and that all of her kids were just in the next room, and that everyone was here, and we loved her, she seemed panicked for a moment but them calmed down, I think she knew I was telling her it was okay to go, and was accepting it, I lied to her, my dad wasn't there, he had been arrested earlier that day, we kept it from her, and I couldn't tell her that her kids couldn't be bothered to come to her. It haunts me that I had to lie to the grandmother that raised me on her death. I don't think I'll ever fully forgive my aunt and uncles. She hadn't had more than two of her kids in the same room in 20 years. And they couldn't even let her see it happen. I'm so late to the party here, but I want to share this. I had a rough life. After decades of pain and mistakes I met this amazing woman. Her family was split on me. Some thought I was a bad choice. Some really liked me, because I was at the very least brutally honest with myself. My wife's grandmother loved me instantly with a love I had rarely experienced in my life. She truly was a driving force in my wife's family accepting me. She was a real firecracker. She'd lived good, had a big family, a great husband. You could see in her eyes from the day I met her she was content with life. She went in and out of hospice, but the last time, the whole family was there. She was completely coherent awake sassy as ever i stopped by to show my love and i'll never forget all the kids grandkids great grandkids family friends were hanging around casually like it was just another day and grandma was a tank so we all knew she'd go home soon i had to leave to pick up my boys from school the wife was staying i made my way through the crowd and gave her a kiss we locked eyes and had a conversation of a million words in a few seconds of eye contact. She saw my soul and I promised her I'd take care of her granddaughter. I feel like I walked out of the room backwards, like a movie. Everyone else was doing something else and talking to everyone other than her. She had this twinkle in her eye and I couldn't look away. She told me she loved me and that luck in a way I hadn't received. Love much in my life. I felt her soul hug me. I knew. She knew. I knew that she knew that no one else knew. She winked at me when I went past the door. I knew. I made it around the corner of the hallway and cried for the long drive home. My wife called me an hour or so later saying she had passed unexpectedly. I still feel like my wife's grandma who was surrounded by a massive family that was close and full of love. 
gave me one of her last glances, to tell me I was loved, like I hadn't been much in my life, I see that love in my wife's eyes every day.